This is the love story of Sarah and Evan. I did think that it might be tricky to get a boyfriend. <laughs> you know, I did, did kind of think that that would be, well, who would really want to go out with someone in a wheelchair? Um, but turns out that it's fine. <laughs> Two years ago, Sarah was carefree. Life revolved around having a job, keeping fit, and catching up with girlfriends. After 12 years in a chair, she had life sussed. Others looked to her for advice. Because I tried to get um, the dish from Sarah about how to meet such a lovely man. And I think the fact is that I haven't sat around waiting for anyone to offer. <laughs> Pretty soon, Evan and Sarah moved in together and started looking for a house. We just like having fun, yeah. We just have a really good time together. He's lovely. Cheers. She's very active, likes to go to the gym, do that kind of stuff, um, very determined. We look after each other, you know, like I'll do things for him and he'll do things for me. Sometimes I have to make him do more things, unfortunately, but um, but it's good. Like, it, it, I, I think it, we balance each other out. She's a really great person to be with. She's really pretty. <laughs> Babies. <laughs> yeah. I look at my friends who are mothers anyway and, you know, able-bodied and just go, oh, my gosh, that looks so hard. Evan had popped the question and they went into full wedding mode. We got engaged and then we were, had two weeks of going, oh, we're going to have a wedding, we'll have it in January and, or February and it'll be great. But it got really stressful. All our families were like, oh, you need to do this. But Sarah had her own news. And then I kind of got this feeling, I was like, oh, I think I could be pregnant. So um, I did the test and then sort of called to Evan through the bathroom. Hey, Evan, we don't have to worry about the wedding anymore. I'm pregnant. <laughs> we can just leave that stress. So we'd gone for quite an, uh, a scan quite early on at about I think it was about seven weeks. And they were, you know, showing the little blob with the heartbeat and it was all very exciting. And then they kind of panned out a little bit. And I was looking at the screen going, oh my gosh, I think there's two blobs with heartbeats there. Oh my God, what, two babies? And so there was, yeah, sort of crying, laughing, more crying. What am I gonna do? Uh. Still no wedding, but they're a family of four. Sweetie. Thanks, Sophie. It's only been in the last few weeks when um, I've had to say, oh, my daughter or my son, or, oh, my gosh, I'm a mother to two children. That, that reality kind of really sinks in and, and it, yeah, it's really crazy. <laughs> Fiance Evan is an IT specialist for a big company. He was determined to be at home supporting Sarah with the babies for the first seven months. Probably right from the beginning of the pregnancy, when I was still in shock, um, he was busy organising everything, like going, OK, we, you know, logistically this is how our leave is going to have to work and we're going to have to have this much money saved up. And, and he really figured it all out, whereas I was still going, uh... Four weeks into motherhood, and Sarah's barely left the house. Not unusual for a first-time mum, especially with twins. Oh, you got it? No. <laughs> Feeding again and again and again. <laughs> it gets a bit Groundhog Day. And Evan's been fantastic. And he'll run around and he'll do the nappies and he'll do the swaddling and the and the extra bottles and and I'll just often just sit there kind of in a daze going. OK, here's one baby, all right, pass me the next one, and then go and express or whatever. When she first found out she was having twins, she was not the only one to freak out. 
everyone around her had an opinion. And then there was a couple of people who just went, what? How are you going to manage twins, Sarah? What are you going to do? So I, you know, I, I, I really liked that reaction, actually, because it meant that it wasn't just, oh, twins, oh, it's so exciting. It was, OK, logistically, how is Sarah going to work this? A friend, also in a chair, had passed on a change table and a cot, perfect for a mum in a wheelchair. And she had specially made, got these made, um, all modified for her. So the change table's a bit higher and I can um, get right underneath it, as well as the cot. And the cot has the door um, on the hinge there. So it just, it was absolutely perfect. So, yeah, without these, I, yeah, I'm not sure what I would have done. We would have come up with some other kind of solution, but this has just been so easy. Sorted. There you go. Sorted. Yay. All clean and dry. And enough food. So sure, I'm in a wheelchair, but, you know, I'm lucky enough to have Evan home with me. And so I can't imagine, you know, being at home, but sure, being able-bodied, that's fine, but at home with the twins by yourself, it would be really, really, really demanding. I think everyone's got their own challenges, and I certainly wouldn't think just because I'm in a chair, I'm the most challenged from all the other people that I've met. She's never been one to sit around. That's kind of what led to her accident. I uh, uh, was um, second to Jan 2000, so yay, go the millennium, and um, some friends and I were going camping, and we stopped up north to have some fish and chips, and I climbed the tree. Um, and then I fell out of the tree and kind of realised pretty instantly that it was a spinal injury. So, yeah, got the... Um, had three fire engines, two police cars, one ambulance and the Westpac helicopter down to the bay we were at. And depending on what friends you talk to, there was five to 50 locals gathered round. Let's see if we can get down onto the mat. Since then, she's always found a way to live life as she wants. Would that be okay? Oh, Odin. Sarah is a paraplegic. So no function from the waist down. She's relying on her upper body strength to be as hands-on with the twins as she can. Put it down on the mat there. There's cool things here. Okay. Whoa. Oops. A bit of a mission to thinking, oh crap, they'll come down and then they'll get tired and then I'll just have to go through the motions again. Or if one um, is, you know, is, t is tired and, you know, I have to go and take one to bed and then come back onto the floor and get the other one, that would be um, quite full on. Here you go, guys. <laughs> you were doing my stomach time with them. I don't know, just put it on my tongue. Oh, you're sweet. And they're getting, you know, so much stronger, lifting their own heads up, starting to roll over. So it's cool. Cool watching them develop. And scary wondering what's going to happen when they're more mobile. <laughs> now we're going to keep, <laughs> keep an eye on them all. We've got to figure out how we're going to get a, a gate put across the doors if we got them open because all the. All like the standard gates, Sarah's chair won't be able to get through. Yeah, they're all really <laughs> tiny. Like the frame around them, and then the little person door. Oh, my. There you go. Oh. Oh. 
Oh! Yeah, I thought I might drop him. That would be a bit embarrassing. <laughs> of course, it would be the day you guys come. I'd drop the baby. Yeah, but it's all in the. It's just figuring out the techniques, isn't it? And I've gotten more confident, way more confident, just taking them on and off the carriers and um, putting them on the couch. And, and the more confident I can get and feel safe, the more we, we can do together. <laughs> what is that? Sophie's already gone. Like every mum, there are moments when parenting seems like a massive learning curve. Evans helps Sarah figure out a way to do most things. She's very determined. If she wants to do something, she's going to do it, you know, just has to find out how she's going to do it. It's not a question of, will I do it or won't I? It's how am I going to get there and do this? Oh, where's my carrier thing? Hi, sweetie, you hungry? Where did I put it? Yes, please. I came to some realisations during my pregnancy that I couldn't be as independent as I would have hoped to have been. And there was going to be some things like putting them in the car when they were babies and just going down to the shops that was going to be a lot more difficult than I had envisioned. I think I had a few teary moments thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Or I'm not even going to be able to go out with my babies by myself. Um, so, yeah, I just had to kind of accept that fact. And, you know, we'll try as, and find, you know, equipment or techniques as best as possible. Hello. The thing about twins is that they have to learn how to wait. <laughs> They have to learn some patience. And then twins with a paraplegic mother, but <laughs> can't be running into them very quickly, especially in the middle of the night. Come on, kid, sweetie. There you go. Kind of go, oh gosh, my poor baby's having to wait for me. <laughs> for the first couple of months, Sarah stuck pretty close to home. It's better. She willingly accepts every bit of help from the extended family. So, I think I've got, we usually have a whole lot of stuff, change mat and stuff. Yeah, usually it would just be wallet, keys, phone, and I'm off. <laughs> and now I have to worry about everyone else as well. But today, the girls of the antenatal group are getting together and she's determined to venture out on her own. Normally, if everything's running smoothly, if we're going anywhere, we try and um, time it between feeds. So we'll get everything all ready and then we'll feed them and then we've got, you know, an hour and a half window or so to get wherever we want to go. Right, well, I think I've got everything. And I can hear a crying baby, so I might have to go and feed her. One hour later, Sophie's fed. Fingers crossed, Odin lasts, because Sarah is making a run for it. Even from coming out and dropping us off, um, we're having a go at me taking the babies. So he's loaded us all up 
and then um, hopefully the, the ladies at the um, lunch are gonna come out and give me a hand. It's officially our first mission out by ourselves with me and the babies. I think we need the pram. So if you want to bring it around, I can put the wheels on. Oh, oh uh, no, you no, did nothing. I think this is what this was. Oh, yeah. Is no. that it? Is there more to it? No, that's okay, it. Okay, we really need it. Just there. I don't want to. Perfect. No, you're all good. Do you want to hop in? Yeah. Anything else you want out? No. Oh, um, just the babies. Well, I'll grab the one on this side. <laughs> Do you need a hand? All the women here have twins, so they know what it's like to juggle babies. She's a bit late, um, but the chance to share stories with other mothers of twins is worth the effort. No, Evan's not coming. I did it by myself today. Wow. Oh, this is my first adventure Love. out. Love. <laughs> yeah. Look at you, Miss. Everyone's the same, everyone's got the same problems and you know, someone's saying here, oh gosh, how do you carry the two babies? I'm like, yeah, that's the same. Same for me, There's, you know, I have those problems too. Hello. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at our boys. Oh, oh, hi. Oh. Back home, babies are asleep, but there's still more to do. Lovely Granny pops in. We live quite close by, so that's really nice, but of course there's lots of chores. <laughs> Keeping track of clothing and um, as they grow so fast. We've got a little bit of chuckling. I do have quite a lot of help as well, so if Mum's come over, she will have helped out as well um, with some dishes or washing. Um, and we're also getting a little bit of home help at the moment in the evenings. When it's just been me, I just have to prioritise all the things that need to be done, or they just don't get done. And then the babies start crying, and so you just have to stop what you're doing and go sort them out. So. <laughs> The only pressure is the pressure that we put on ourselves at first. That pressure was, oh, why isn't it working? And, and but knowing in the back of my head that, that that was fine and we just had to roll with it. Have a good sleep. There you go. Sorted. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to have You want to look at us? Yeah, so this is, this is what works for me in regards to tandem feeding. Because you can have both, you know, a baby on each boob at the same time, and lots of people try and do that with twins. And I did try it out a few times, but it just hasn't really worked out for me. I couldn't do it by myself, and um, it just was awkward and uncomfortable for all of us. I was just making a bottle up, and I went, wait a second, I wonder if I could do this. I wonder if I could do them both at once with the bottle and, the, and on the breast and on the cot here. So I gave it a go and it took me ages the first time, like two hours or something. <laughs> and then, but I was so excited <laughs> when I went to Evan and went, I did a feed off by myself, it was so cool. <laughs> Thank you.
one thing which is quite daunting is that we have such little time to do everything. So if they're feeding every two and a half or three hours and they're only asleep for an hour, an hour and a half, then I'm constantly thinking, OK, what needs to be done? I need to, need to tidy the kitchen, need to put the washing on, I need to, you know, get myself dressed already for the day, need to eat. Tonight, it's Evan's dad's turn. OK, guys, who wants to have baths first? Who wants to have the first bath? Who? Oh, looks like it. Sophie's put up her hand. Sophie wants the first bath. Right. It's almost 30 years since he had his kids, and he's loving it. Oh, yep, yeah, feels good. All good? Oh, can Which you way? just put her into the bath a little bit? More for me. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna wash your eyes. Okay. <laughs> it's good to come over and sort of have a little fix and sort of help out on the way through. And you know, he's obviously talking to me, which so he's he's pretty advanced. <laughs> Well, I've been lucky, it's sort of been once a week, but it's been a week and a half or so since the last time, and I just can't get over how much they grow. Bath time's really fun, the kids really love it. Um, but it's definitely, for me, it's a two-person job when I'm, when I'm doing it, because I can't quite um, get the babies in and out of the bath by myself. Um, and it's also just great to have two people um, do it. Well, I think it's cool, because she's in control. <laughs> You know, so, she, you know, and it's, and it's just, that's what Sarah's like. She's, she, she's pretty demanding. And, <laughs> and it's just a chance to sort of help out where I'm allowed. So that, that's all good. Pretty demanding. Right, well, come and get the baby then, Lindsay. Come on, do some work. Grab a towel. Oh, yeah. maybe. You want the towel as well? Well. Just hold that up while I... OK. Come on. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get you to put the hair on. Yeah, yeah. sweet. Yeah, so. Thought I'd be the most relaxed yeah, so. mother. Everything would be fine. I'd have it all under control. I think I'm, you know, <laughs> relaxed a little bit more, but I don't think anything's ever under control. <laughs> I think it's fantastic that the kids have had so many different people and, you know, they see all four of their grandparents once a week or every couple of weeks they'll see just about every grandparent and I think that's such a cool thing for them to have, um, as well as great aunts and aunties and uncles and I think that's such a cool way to, to, to grow up at having all of that family around. <laughs> Bring my stuff and put a head piece in. And I think Kira's gonna come over on Friday night and hang out. Oh yeah. And help out. Won't play computer games in. Okay. And tomorrow mum's coming over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, when I was thinking about the challenges of, of, you know, when I first found out I was pregnant and I thought, OK, having twins is going to be a huge challenge. And I was thinking about it last night, how when I broke my back and um, was in my wheelchair and I thought that was going to be a huge challenge and it was going to be the biggest thing that I tackled in my life. And now being in the wheelchair is just normal and every day. And so this is what's happened with the twins, is that something that I thought was just going to be this huge, big, crazy challenge um, is now just everyday life. Honey, come up and talk to me. Here we go. <laughs> what yummy 
stuff have we got for dinner tonight, guys? And it took me about, you know, two or three years of contemplation about whether I should have children. And that wasn't just to do with the wheelchair, you know, just whether I personally would be able to handle having children. I think it's, yeah, it's just another challenge, which that's cool. Yep, I can do it with a bit of help. <laughs>